Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today's talk is on maximizing a child's IQ. Okay, this is a talk for the Singapore Microcomputer Society. My name is uh, Lim Beng Cheng. Okay, first, I will need to do some disclaimer. There is uh, no research done. I didn't do any research. There's no scientific proof. All the claims are my own observations. Some are on high side. And uh, all the conclusions drawn are actually based on logic. So uh, it's up to you to draw your own conclusion, whether to believe or not, or to have your own variation. So I will also briefly talk about the achievement of uh, my children and it's up to the best of my knowledge. Okay, so all my opinions are subjective. Okay, it's uh, you believe or you don't, that's all. Okay, first I will have to introduce uh, some of the achievement of my children. You can check it up at uh, limjet.com. Okay, then Limja is the name of my son, but inside there you can check all the three children. Okay, so we shall go to the website. Okay. Okay, so first go to the website, limjet.com. Okay, these are my three children. Okay, then uh, you can see them when they were kids. Okay, this is my son. Here you can check the block. I mean, it's the eldest daughter, the youngest daughter. Okay, and all their, all their medals, their achievements are all listed there. Nothing secret to hide. Okay. First, I'll talk about my eldest daughter, okay, Min Min. Okay, starting from 2014. Okay, she's already in primary four and already winning a number of medals and competition. And then when primary five, she's, she's always at the top now, maths. Of course, second, and then primary six, she's top in everything. So she's quite uh, academically uh, good in all, generally all layers, uh, all, all levels and all subjects. So primary six, uh, she got the scholarship uh, with a T-score of 265. Okay, so these are all the achievement until uh, eventually she went to NTU and completed four years of studies in the mathematical science. So graduated. Okay. And then uh, okay. Here's uh, the achievement in uh, summary. So you'll see that in uh, primary four, she has been winning uh, a number of uh, distinctions in uh, a lot of competitions. But primary six is uh, top in her uh, school, math, science, and uh, the standard. So it, she also took part in the NJRC, which is a National Junior Robotics Competition in P6, open category, uh, got first. And then NGRC in set one also got the first. And then she went for the World Robot Olympiad in Taiwan. She got the second open category. Okay, I did help out in, in her training in a primary school, uh, free of charge, because my daughter is inside the robotics club. Then under the Singapore Mass Olympiad Junior, which is a uh, set two and below, she got gold, 
senior, which is uh, SEC 4 and uh, SEC 3. She got gold in both uh, SEC 3 and SEC 4. In open is, uh, they call some call it A level. Now they call it year six. Uh. So year six and below. So she got twice. Uh, this year five, year six, she, she took part and got silver in both. And then A level, she got seven distinction. NTU, she got C and Young scholarship. And uh, C and Young it was a Nobel Prize winner. He's uh, a Taiwanese. This uh, CN Young scholarship is equivalent to a uh, NUS uh, Global Scholarship with uh, six months of uh, student exchange uh, in any in one of the universities that uh, they have uh, worked with. And then NTU deans this in mathematical science every year. And she great. Her uh, score was a uh, 4.98 out of 5, which is uh, quite a high score. So maybe about 10 or less than 10 were in this, uh, around, that, around that score, like 4.98 and above. Okay, so this was uh, in 2007, uh, World Robot Olympiad in Taiwan, runner-up. This on the left is uh, Li Min and uh, a friend, the organizer, another of her friend, and this is me. Okay, because I was a trainer, so it was sponsored by the Singapore Science Center. So all the three students and one trainer were sponsored free to go there to take part. Next, uh, we talk about Ninja's achievement. So this is a summary. Okay. You go to the website, you go to the main page, huh? his achievements are all listed down here. A lot, okay. So since uh, P3, primary three, he has been already doing very well. First, P4, first. This one is uh, in the in the school, which is the uh, neighborhood school, Queenstown Primary School. So it, it's not so there are not many many very fantastic uh, student there. He was never in the those uh, special uh, schools uh, which. Uh, just a normal uh, primary school. So primary five, primary six, and primary six, okay, this uh, primary five, and now you go primary six, okay, he already went to Hong Kong for maths competition. And uh, he, he got a perfect score. And then uh, the and then he took part in all this Singapore Mass Olympia in secondary school section. Then he got the eight. This one is a uh, later we'll go through uh, the summary of all these things. So he, then this one is a uh, when he was in secondary one, sec two. Set three, set four, and uh, year five, year six, and then after he went NS, and then he later he got the scholarship, and then he went to in Trinity College in uh, Cambridge. So he also graduated already. So now he's uh, in uh, Caltex. Caltex. No as Caltech, C A L T E C H in US. But because of the COVID 19 virus, he's in Singapore doing an online uh, study. Okay, so here's a summary. So, Premier 6, he 
already took part in the Poyongkok Primary Maths Contest and he got a perfect score. So the, the school was very proud and excited. And then Primary 6, he took part in the senior, Singapore Maths Olympiad senior. Senior is meant for sec 2 and below. And he was only Primary 6 and he got 8 position. So far, this uh, has never been matched by any primary school. Nobody came in within the top 10 in uh, primary, on primary 6. So this was when the principal of uh, NUS High noticed him because he was uh, one of the organizers of this Singapore Mass Olympia. So he was looking for students uh, in uh, Nanyang Primary School. Those are the gifted class. Uh, but he didn't realize the uh, Queenstown Primary School, uh, which is a neighborhood school, has uh, someone uh, who is uh, very good in maths. So for the first 30 position, the top 30 position, the first top 10 uh, are occupied by the NUS High and RI. So the 11 to 30 are a mixture of NUSI, RI, and uh, Hua Chong. So only these three schools were in the top 30. And then uh, the top 10 is uh, only NUSI and RI. And there's one from Queenstown Primary School, which is uh, on the eighth position. And then uh, when he was in set one, he took part in the SMO Open. And then he, he got a goal. SMO Open, Open is uh, meant for A-level student. That means uh, year six. When he was set one, it's only year one. So he's competing with people who are five years older than him. So out of... Uh, throughout the the whole uh, six years in, uh, in uh, SMO. So you realize uh, SEC 2 to primary 6. Okay, he won uh, he took part in the IMO and then he got a bronze, silver and then three gold. He, starting from SEC 2, he already was uh, selected for the International Mass Olympia. So the selection was because when he was in SEC 1, he took part in the Singapore Mass Olympia and he, and he got a goal. So he, those who got a goal were selected for the national team. So he was quite, uh, quite stressful lah, because in the national team, when they find that it, this young kid uh, only said one. He do he didn't know anything about maths theory and uh, all the theorem. He knew nothing. Whereas the rest are year five, year six. So they sent him to the senior. Senior is a set four level. Now uh, in the senior team, they teach. Uh, the concept in maths. So he has to attend two training, one for senior and one for open. Oh, at that time, I think he was stressed out. He came back home, uh, he didn't understand. <laughs> he didn't understand some of the, the, the maths theory and all these things. So my wife asked me to help him. Uh. So I took out some, took the notes, read through a bit. Then I tried to explain to him. So, but, I only explained halfway and then he will just take the paper and walk away, walk back to his room. So I was wondering what happened. Then my wife was saying, never mind, I don't care. He probably uh, already understood. He just need to talk a bit, mention a bit, and somehow uh, he realized the whole thing. And then he don't listen, he just went off and do his own thing. So after a few of these start of sessions, then he don't ask me anymore. <laughs> so I wonder whether he 
understood or he can't be bothered. But actually, he understood. I suppose he understood. Because uh, eventually, he don't have problem with it, with all the math question and all the algorithm theorem. So he was doing very well. So sec two, he got selected in 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 Singapore. Why every year they selected six people, uh, six students. So year two he was selected. He was just nice number six. So he was selected and he represented Singapore in the international mass Olympiad. And because he was very young, sec two only, he got a bronze. So. Then uh, set three, he went, he got a silver. And then set four, he got a gold and was second. And then uh, year five, he got a gold and was a champion with a perfect score. And then year six, he got a gold again. This time he was third, missed by one mark because uh, the first and second has 41 marks and he got 40 marks. The same when on the the first goal that he got, he was second. He missed by two marks. The champion was a lady uh, called Lisa. She got a uh, four goal in her in all her years from a Germany. So it's very it's very rare for a girl to to even take part in the international mass Olympia. Yet uh, this girl got uh, four gold, so she was ranked number two really in the in the international mass Olympia out of the sixty one years. So my son was ranked number nine in the world out of the sixty one years of history. Okay, of course, I uh, in secondary four he also took part in the DSO cryptography and he came in first. So DSO has a special relationship with NUS High. They sponsored uh, a lot of, uh, like uh, for example, in, when you are in NUS High, you can take part in uh, NUS uh, causes. So you, you just Take part like uh, like any student without uh, without having to enter the university. So you can pick some of the subjects, and then you can take part in the lecture, tutorial, and the exam. And it actually has a score. You get a certain number of score. You can get your degree. So out of in the six years in NUS high, he already completed all the all the mass module in NUS. Four years of mass module. So actually, if you go NUS, he got nothing to study already. Only need to study the non-core like other things are like management and all those to get his degree. So the principal will say. Actually, don't don't no point go NUS. You go NUS, you have nothing to study. Only do research and prepare for PhD. But they give him the NUS uh, merit scholarship when he was in uh, set four. Set four, they already given him the NUS merit scholarship, and then they say, uh, you you can you can come into NUS." You don't need to finish the NUS high from set four, you can straight go in. But uh, he didn't. Uh. Then in year five, uh, when he got the IMO champion uh, in year five, in the year 2012, and NUS upgraded the scholarship to a global scholarship, which include a one year foreign student exchange. And that he also uh, is allowed to, or he was allowed to proceed to NUS without uh, having to finish uh, NUS high. But of course, uh, 
there's a problem here because even if you go NUS after one year, the next year he has to serve uh, NS. After NS, then he go back and continue. So he, he didn't want, we think it's not a good idea. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All his friends are in NUS high. So he's not so keen to go to NUS at the moment. So we just left it to him. So he completed NUS high six years of, uh, in NUS high six years. Then he finished NS, then after he went to Trinity College, Cambridge. So he was uh, recommended by uh, the principal in NUS high, and the time was uh, Dr. Han. So he also re recommended that he shouldn't go NUS because he already completed all the courses, all the mass module. So he should go to Trinity College. There, they have the best uh, maths professor there. So he, he recommended uh, one of the professor in uh, Trinity College. And then uh, he got a place there. So if you go to the IMO uh, webpage, uh, he was a uh, rank world number nine. Okay. So in in this uh, I'm old web page, you go to the Hall of Fame. Then you can see uh, Lisa or Lisa is now number two, German, four gold and one silver. And then this is my son in that three gold, one silver, one bronze, Singapore. So Yeah. And then the, the top one is uh, from Canada, uh, five gold or oh, one bronze. So this is uh, quite fantastic, this guy. <laughs> okay. So we, after uh, NS, he got an autonomous university scholarship where from M, M uh, Ministry of Education, where he can study in any of the university that he choose. So he went to Trinity College, Cambridge. So the, the study is uh, all paid for by the scholarship. And then uh, in 2020, he also took part in the Google Code Jam, and then he was ranked 57 in the world. Uh, he's, although he's not the top, but 57 is quite fantastic. He's in, in Singapore, he's really the champion, really, the highest ranking in Singapore, but in the world, he's 57. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, Many people cannot even reach the top 1,000. <laughs> so he finished his Cambridge with uh, awarded the pass with honors. He was, I think, fourth, la, like the third or fourth in the maths. Okay. So now we talk about Dimbi. Dimbi is the youngest daughter. Okay. And, uh, If you okay, look at this link, you will get all her link from primary school, primary two, she's already uh, taught in her school and then took part in some competition, which is a primary three maths. And then we the scoring distinction and primary four, primary Primary three and primary four, and then primary five, and then primary six. And then uh, you we find that uh, there, there are a lot of she she has been very good in maths. And then set one, set two, set three, set four, and then uh, she took part in this. Uh, 
international yes represented singapore in the international olympia informatics and then she got a silver medal yeah this uh the only girl in singapore who got a medal and it's not difficult not i mean it's not easy to get into this uh, ioi to represent singapore they only pick uh, four students only for every year they pick only four students okay so they don't care whether you're male or female the, the best four will go in so maybe in future they will have a ioi for female and ioi for male because every time you you see most of the people who took part uh, they are all uh, male students hardly very few female is is quite funny maths and computing there are very few female okay then after that uh, she's in the nus under the nus uh, merit scholar scholarship then she's also in the dean list okay so you look at the summary okay Primary two, she's already starting to win competition. So as children, uh, when they win, they get more excited, they're more interested. And then uh, that, after that, you don't need to push them. Eh? They just continue on their own. All my three uh, children, I don't need to do any tuition, don't need to go for tuition or don't need even to teach them. <laughs> I, I don't teach them anything, not even, only maybe primary school, some of the science subjects. Then my wife will say, don't teach them too much. Or don't, don't teach them extra out of the topic. Because if you teach them too much, and then they'll go to school and tell the teacher that the teacher is wrong. For example, if you, they say insects, all insects lay eggs. Then I will tell them, no, there are some insects that give birth a life. Then they will, my wife will say, teach them all these things uh, when they are too young, then they will get confused. And then in school, uh, the teacher say, which, they say, sharks give birth a life. They say, no, there are some sharks that lay eggs. And then, uh, all sorts of things, but uh, seldom, I uh, seldom teach them. And then uh, this uh, Singapore Mass Olympia Junior is uh, he took part when he was in uh, Premier Six got bronze, Set One got silver, Set Two got gold. And then in the senior team, this uh, Set Three, Set Four, she got gold in both. Then open category, she took part uh, four times and got two bronze and two gold and she was also at one of one of the year was ranked a uh, fifth that means uh, there are four other guys are uh, better than her so not too bad lah. but among the girls she's the top lah, in the whole singapore no no other girls even come close to it so she went china for mass olympia uh, competing with uh, those uh, China, all the China girls. So she went there when they were quite young. So she got two silver and a gold. And then she was ranked fifth la, in the whole competition. So not too bad. La. And then uh, year six, la, okay, the National Olympiad in informatics she got to go and she was third in the in singapore okay so maths uh, she was fifth but maths they will select only the top six uh, to represent singapore so unfortunately she didn't make it during the selection sometimes if you are at the borderline uh, sometimes the question you can't do or you will take longer to do then you are behind already so you are out of the list because they select 
only the top six. So in competition, you may be fifth, but in the selection, you may be seven, eight, or whatever rank. Then you won't get selected. Unless you are very good, consistently very good, then you, you will always get selected for the, for the national team. Then, uh, but since she didn't get selected in the mess, then she concentrated on the programming. And then she was selected. Okay. And then uh, in 2017, she took part in the International Olympia Informatics held in Tehran and uh, in Iran. Uh, and uh, she got a silver. So the only medal for, for female. Singapore uh, all those who took part are guys. Previously I there's one girl but uh, didn't won and didn't uh, win any medal. Then uh, she was given the NUS uh, merit scholarship which uh, she's been studying now already in third year already. And in 2018 she took part in a Google code gem for women. She was ranked number one champion. But the, the subsequent year, she didn't make it as a champion. It's quite difficult to be a champion because uh, the questions differ. Sometimes you are slower. Sometimes you uh, you can't you didn't read the questions properly. You can't understand the question, or your algorithm is not efficient enough, or you make mistakes. Uh, many things. Uh, many things you can happen so it's not always a champion but these are just competition uh, in, in, in real life it doesn't translate into uh, anything in real life but it helps uh, it helps a lot in in your in the future maybe application for a job and all these things like internship she, she can she get internship with google and she can intern with a GIC. So these are places where the, the selection is very stringent. Uh. They went for five, six interview uh, to get into, to be just an intern. Okay, and then she also in the NUS Dean's list, she's now on the third year. And then she's also a tutor. That means uh, they actually paid the student to tutor other classes. Sometimes uh, the younger class, that means the year one, year two, or year three. Because uh, she has completed some of the NUS module already while she was in NUS high. So it's quite free. Uh. Some of the modules don't need to study because already passed. So exempted. Then since she has taken the module and she's quite good, they make her as a tutor. So also good now. When you teach and you learn faster. Okay, these are some of the medals a lot until full house. Still some of them cannot display up. Okay. Okay, so after my intro of the student, my children, then I will talk about how you take care of uh, when it's a baby, then you have you need nutrition, and then uh, make sure no stress. That's very important. You must let the baby grow without stress. But how to do, how to achieve it? So I will talk about it. And then how you take care of the kid when they grow big. Because uh, you must be firm. Uh, of course, you don't scold, don't beat them and all these things. And followed by some encouragement. And most important is uh, no conflict. Your wife say one thing, you don't go and contradict her. Leave it. Uh, wrong also, never mind. Anyway, they are kids. Uh, there's nothing that's always right or wrong. And uh, for example, my wife will ask them, 
they can play computer only one hour. So maybe nine to 10 or 10 to 11, uh, something like that. Then she will go to sleep. So she normally sleep at nine or 10. Then I got to ask the kids to stop because one hour. So sometimes I let them play until play for two hours, three hours, uh, we don't care. Lah. Because she's a good, she become the good guy, ask the, let them play computer. I become the bad guy, ask them to stop playing. So sometimes you don't want to be such a bad guy. Uh. <laughs> Otherwise, this time the kid uh, always think that, hey, the mother is a good one, the father is a bad guy, they always ask me to stop playing computer games. Okay, so later we will explain, is it the father's genes or mother's genes? Then what nutrients do parents need? Do the parents need? Otherwise, uh, the baby needs nutrients also. Okay, so now we talk as a baby. Okay. Milk is the most important. Okay, milk is food. Milk is not water. Or milk is not drink. Okay, you, you must understand this. Milk is food. Okay, of course, uh, breast milk for the three months will be good enough uh, because uh, the wife got to go back to work. Sometimes uh, the maternity leave is not enough. But uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, it should, it's enough for... You don't need to breastfeed for six months or whatever month. In fact, earlier, uh, because she read some magazine and all those and friends encouraged, so she tried to uh, extract the milk, put in a bottle and bring it back home. But after a few tries, uh, uh, she gave up. It's too troublesome. You must put in the fridge. and must put in a cold bag. Make sure it, the milk don't turn sour. Otherwise, uh, you you don't keep it cold, it, it can spoil. The milk will turn in sour or get a contaminated bacteria will grow and so on. So she can't be bothered. Eh? Then now uh, we start using a uh, milk powder. Okay, but one thing for sure is never use condensed milk or carnation milk. That will affect the child's uh, development because this milk has no nutrient. It's only sugar, mini sugar. So we always, uh, when you talk to old grandmother, not my grandmother, like other people's grandmother and so on. Sometimes you listen to them, they'll tell you during that time life was difficult. No, it, where to find milk powder? Where to uh, have a chance for all this? So they will just use a condensed milk. But these are only good when you go for in the coffee shop, drink coffee, tea, even tell them kopi o, kopi siu tai, kopi si kosong, all these things. So these are milk meant for adults, not for children. But when you listen to the story of this uh, old grandmother, that last time they were poor, they got to feed the baby with condensed milk. Then you, when they get uh, richer as, as time pass, uh, years later, Singapore progress, life become better, they can afford milk powder. So they will feed the baby with milk powder. Then you see the elder, the elder child compared to the younger one. Hey, the younger one are more intelligent than the elder one. Because the elder one are fed with condensed milk. Because the younger one are fed with milk powder. So my conclusion is never feed your baby with condensed milk. Okay? Just milk powder but what brand of milk powder so for us uh, we started let's say a month already we started to mix milk powder and breast milk so but 
from the hospital, they give us a sample milk powder, one bottle, one can only, one tin. So once we finish, we use other brand. Then we also don't bother uh, because we believe all these branded ones, uh, you got to pay for the branding. So we actually bought uh, Dumex, which was uh, quite cheap, uh, maybe at half the price. Only. But uh, they grow up well, nothing wrong. The other thing is, uh, we also, somebody also lent us those uh, machine to steam the bottle. So perhaps you may need to keep the bottle steam whole day. Because when we, but for us, we, after steam, we switch it off. But then when we want to use it, I find that there's a, some stale smell inside the bottle. So in a short while later, we, we stop using this steaming. We just wash the bottle and then uh, leave it to dry. Just air it to dry. That's all. We, we don't steam it too troublesome. And then uh, hot water, okay, they, we, some people will just uh, pour hot water into the bottle and then uh, put the bottle in a pail of cold water or tap water to cool it down. And after they will turn the bottle, pour onto the drip onto the hand and see whether is it uh, too hot or just warm enough, then they feed the children. So I think this is uh, wasting a lot of time. You boil the water, you pour one whole bottle of water, and then you put it in the bag, in the pail of cold water to cool down the, cool down the milk then you feed the baby, ah, too much trouble. So what I did is I only pour one quarter, about one quarter hot water with the milk powder. You put the milk powder in, then one quarter, shake, dissolve everything, then top out with normal, normal temperature uh, water. So it will be just warm only, good enough. Lah. Because when you give the baby, the baby don't know. They just drink as why it's not burning, burning the lips or the mouth. Huh? Then they don't care. They just drink it. So they drink very fast. They finish it. So there's no need to pour a whole bottle of hot water and cool it. The other advantage is you pour a whole bottle of hot water, then the the hot water will dissolve some of the uh, plastic, the chemical inside the plastic. So those are bad for the health. There are some research that say it's bad for the health and bad for baby. But uh, of course, uh, this type of research, especially on uh, human, it's hard to tell unless you, have, you can repeat it. But you can't repeat because the baby already grown up. And then uh, different children has different environment. How do you know that the child you drink with this uh, plastic bottle end up healthier or end up less healthy or what? It's, it's difficult. But generally, the research point to the fact that it is there's some risk uh, in in the plastic chemicals within the plastic and then there's also another study that says that hot water will break down some of the plastic and you got nano plastic inside the hot water but whether this nano plastic enter your body and come out the other end and no effect or waste stay inside your body somewhere hide somewhere inside your bloodstream because they are nano particles they are too small and they may get lodged somewhere inside your body. We, we do not know. 
So all these are just research. It's, it's too small, nano, nano particle. Uh, unless you, you take the person out uh, and then cut the pieces and search for this nano plastic somewhere in the body. It's not possible to do that. And then you, you can't find, once it's too small, uh, you enter your body, you don't know where they hide. You, you can't find it also. So it's just all theory. Uh, whether you believe or not, it's up to you. Uh. But for me, I just pour one quarter hot water, top up with cold water very fast. It, the hot water doesn't stay for a few seconds. So to dissolve any plastic is almost not possible. Or very, very unlikely. Rather than one whole bottle and sit there for 20, 10 minutes to cool down. Oh no. The other thing when I boil hot water is I use an electric kettle. I will just turn it on, put the milk powder, then turn it off in a few seconds. I I don't let the kettle boil until it trip itself and switch off by itself. Once I it boil, if I can hear the sound, I switch off already. So it's hot, but it's not boiling hot. Of course, you pour on your hand, you will burn your hand. It's hot. It's very hot. But it's not so hot until it will trip the, the kettle and switch it off. And there's no need to do that. Because it's hot enough, you pour into the bottle, you are going to add cold water. So what's the point of boiling hot and super hot and then you still add water to cool it down. So all this heat, heat are just heat. It has no nutritional value. It's just heat. Okay. Then uh, the, the milk powder, okay, we follow the instruction behind. You, you buy the milk powder, not for adult. Okay, it must be milk powder for baby. Okay, don't buy the milk powder for adult. Adult, those for adult, they remove the fat. And this fat they are probably required for children. And you, you just make sure you buy the milk powder for baby. And at the back, they tell you how many kg, then you put how many scoop. So we just follow the instruction. Sometimes, uh, in between, uh, you can put half, uh, let's say, let's say uh, 3 kg, 1 scoop, 4 kg, 2 scoop, but it's 3.5, so one half. So it, there's no clear cut that you need to follow, but you feed a bit more, it's okay. But you don't overfeed. Overfeed, then I do not know what happened. I didn't try. So we just feed according to the the instruction given at the back of the tin is written there. How many kg give how many scoop? So we just follow. Okay, if you want to put a bit more, it's fine. If you put less, uh, I'm worried uh, not enough nutrient. Grow slower, that's all. You put more than excess nutrient, just wasted, no? but no harm. Uh. But too much, uh, maybe sometimes uh, indigestion. And then there's also instruction, how much water. Then you just follow the marking on the bottle, you just top up the water, that's it. So we just follow the instruction, okay? More or less, I also don't know whether it's good or bad. So that's it. Okay, now we will talk a bit on the nipple on the milk bottle. Okay, this is an important trick, a lot of people uh, didn't know about this. Okay, uh, before I go into that, then I must remind you that you shouldn't let the baby to be on a vegetarian diet. Okay, although you can say, oh, vegetable has a, is, is good, good for health, good for this, good for that. Ah, oh, that's for doubt. La. You think it's good, you, you, you follow a vegetarian diet, but you don't give a baby a vegetarian diet. It's very cruel because uh, it's difficult for a baby to digest uh, all the nutrients or the proteins from a plant. The plant protein and animal protein are different. And 
milk is the easiest for the baby to digest and make use of the nutrients and not from a plant. Okay, although you can say oil oh, soya milk also milk, uh, but it's not it's not truly milk. They have uh, the nutrient composition is not balanced, it's meant for a plant. Okay, the nutrients are meant for plants, not meant for a human, especially for a baby. So I will not uh, recommend you to do a, to give your baby a vegetarian diet. Okay, that's my advice. Huh? Okay, so now we come back to the nipple. Okay, nowadays uh, the nipple is uh, using a silicone rubber. Last time our nipple is a uh, uh, brown color type, brown or orange. Huh? Now they all come in this form, transparent silicone rubber. Supposed to be more sturdy. Oh. Okay, but nipple comes with different hole sizes. So at the top of the nipple, there's a hole, small hole, big hole, bigger hole. When your baby grow older and older, then or bigger and bigger, then the hole is supposed to be bigger and bigger. Theoretically, it's like that. Because you say if you put a hole too big, uh, then the baby cannot swallow fast enough. Uh, you get choked and uh, it's not it's not appropriate. But I don't care. Because I find even the bigger hole uh, is uh, is a problem because when you take the water and you overturn it, the water just shoot a little bit will ooze out from the will just shoot out uh, from the hole. So the hole is bigger, the more will come out. So you must be very careful. Otherwise, you shoot into the eyes and all this and the nose, and then the baby gets very uncomfortable. So what I do is I'll just buy the one with the tiniest hole. Then I will cut. Either cut a cross or cut a Y shape. Okay, the, the reason is I, either one will do, but uh, why you need to cut across or why uh, is because a very tiny hole is very difficult for the baby to to suck because every time sucks and then sometimes the milk powder if it's not fully dissolved uh, then it gets stuck and then they suck like hell uh, no water come out the milk don't come out they get tired and then they fall asleep or they hard they they will be underfed. Sometimes you feed them, you find the bottle is not finished. Then some parents will throw away. But if it's not finished, I will drink the milk. <laughs> so we don't waste the milk. But I hardly have any chance to drink. Almost no chance. Because my children will finish every drop. Very fast. And because when I cut in a cross or Y shape, when I tilt over, the the milk won't shoot out because the hole is so tiny, and because this cross sealed by itself. But when the baby mouth uh, bite on this nipple, or the mouth close on the nipple, it will open up. All this this cross uh, or this Y shape, it will just open up, and the milk will just ooze out. So the baby can drink the milk very fast and they can control it. All they need just relax, open the mouth, relax, take a breath and the milk stop coming up. So the harder she press, up to a certain point, she press hard or soft, uh, the, the, she can control or the baby can control the amount of milk flow. And it's very fast. The baby will finish it in, in less than a minute. The bottle of milk, you cook, 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 finish, and nothing wasted. After finish, the baby just go and sleep. So you don't waste milk, and the baby don't get frustrated, and you don't waste energy sucking the milk and sucking air. When no more air, they know no, finish. No more air. We won't suck the air. Keep on sucking the air. They, they know it's finished. But you must take note that when you cut, uh, 
okay, it will tear. Every fight, uh, every fight will tear. Sometimes they tear left, right, they tear anyhow, uh, because as a, as we use the thing to keep on biting, biting and sucking, the, the cut that you had done will tear, 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 tear. And because the cross, uh, this cut here and this cut here is very close, chances of it tearing until here is higher. Uh. Whereas if it's a wire, uh, it takes a longer distance to reach. So it's okay. But once the tear is like almost reaching uh, 50% or, or more, uh, then it's time to replace. Uh. And it, it, it takes a long time, uh, maybe a few months to, to reach such the tear. So it's okay. Just the nipple is very cheap. Once it start tearing, you just replace. And then uh, the baby won't notice it. Although you replace with a new cut, uh, definitely smaller than this tear. This tear is so big, and yet uh, they still can drink without problem. So when, when the baby bite on it, even more milk will come out faster, much, much faster, because the tear is very big. But they don't have a problem because it's gradual. The tear gradually increases, increases. So the baby slowly get used to the speed. They get faster and faster. They won't notice that it's, it's cracking, tearing. So it's fine. And when you cut new one, okay, lah, they, maybe they realize how come it's slower a bit, but it's fast enough. Lah, so it's okay. They can control the speed. So it's not an issue. Okay, now it's talk a bit about the urine blood, the, the urine and the bladder. So, for example, at rest, uh, okay, you use a balloon as illustration. Okay, when you're lying down, relax, your balloon will be flat. Okay, but when, when you stand up, okay, stand up or sit up, then there will be a stretch, a stress on the balloon. You, the, the weight of the urine will be cooling the, the bladder down. And then you feel the tension. Once you feel tension, then you have the urge to urine. Okay, if you don't believe, every morning when you wake up, uh, you find that you can lie down on the bed. You don't find the, you you can still control your urine. But once you sit up or stand up, uh, very quickly uh, you find that oh, very high tide. There's an urge to urine. So this, uh, this is probably the reason uh, because of the tension. Okay, but of course you lie down, the urine will gather more and more and more and more. Then there will still be tension. Uh, it, your urine bladder cannot grow forever, cannot be expanded forever. Even the balloon you expand too much, it will burst. So the urine also, the bladder has expand too much, uh, then it will be there'll be an urge to urine. So the baby will just urine out while lying down. But for us, we will just carry the baby up because you remove the pampers or napkin, whatever you want it. Then you lift up the baby, then sit on the potty. And once the baby is upright, huh, then the tension of the bladder will create an urge to urine then the baby will just urine out. Then after finish urine, then you can feed the milk. So after you finish feeding the milk, then you can put the baby back to sleep. Then simple, the baby will continue to sleep. So how many hours to feed to urine? Then it depends. If you go too late, let's say you put at three hours, then you realize, ah, the baby already urine, urinated out. That means three hours is too long. Then you cut down two and a half hours. So you find it, two and a half hour or two hours, you give up, you check, it's still dry, still dry, then you give up the baby and the baby urine. And then after you feed the milk, you go back, to, go back again to sleep then it's fine. So if, if you too long, your timing is too long, then 
the baby will have urinated out. That means you miss the timing. So you slowly adjust the timing from, from experience. Uh, slowly you know what how many hours the baby can hold the urine without urinating out. Then one piece of pamper can last many days. <laughs> My wife one day came and said, this pamper already four days and still dry. So what to do? Now that's his suggested. Hey, I mean, my let let them go in urine, wet it, and can throw away. Because if it's dry, uh, and then you want to throw away a bit wasteful. So let the baby urine. I mean, up to you, you know. You and then very fast, uh, if you practice this soon, uh, you don't even bother to wear pampers. You just put it on the bed. Then every two, three hours, you just give it up. That's it. You save on all the pampers and the bed remain dry. But sometimes you can mistakes can happen and then you wet your bed. But very seldom, maybe a few times in a year. Okay. The the thing is uh, sometimes uh, the the sheet and the urine uh, okay, shouldn't mix because when you mix the sheet with something called feces and all this, you mix it, then it's, it, it becomes very irritating and it can create rashes. So if the baby sheet or some kind of pass motion or whatever, then you got to remove it uh, as soon as possible. Okay, otherwise, I uh, it, it gets itchy and then irritates the skin. But you can get those uh, cream uh, from hospital. They give us a sample. It's called Tapolin. It's quite effective. We use it sparingly. Just apply a little bit and then and then it's okay. It, the rashes will disappear. And after the baby grow up, I still have almost the whole bottle or whole tube. The whole tube is still not finished. You still can use it, it, it will be i think it's quite useful for ns or army boy uh, when they go to a uh, jungle or camping or there's a river crossing or rain and wet so it can cause a lot of uh, skin irritation and rashes so i think this cream also quite effective that's why i went army i also use those cream. it's quite effective Okay, and the other thing is when when the when the baby shit you you cry. Don't wait until the baby cry. When the baby cry, that means is um, they are uncomfortable. When uncomfortable, then the cortisol level will rise, so they will cry to get attention, to remove the uncom uncomfortable event. So when the cortisol level rises, okay, this cortisol is something like a poison. So when the cortisol level is always very high, then the baby cannot develop very well because it has to have energy to remove the cortisol because energy in the sense of chemical reaction and all these things, which they must get rid of this high level of cortisol. So you will uh, probably lose a few IQ points and very little, maybe zero point something. But if the baby keep crying, crying, then you you end up losing a lot of uh, IQ points. Okay. Even as a kid, uh, when the when the baby grows as a kid, if you keep beating the kid, scolding them, then they get very stressed. So when the when the small kid gets stressed, then the cortisol level go up. That will affect the development, especially the mental development. All these things, uh, I didn't do uh, any control experiment on it. It's just a, a understanding uh, that stress caused cortisol level to rise, and cortisol level remains too high is bad for the 
the human body, even as adult. So if you are always depressed, stressed, stressed out, then your cortisol level very high, your immunity can, can fall. Then you can get sick and many things happen. Uh, you go on the internet and check out, you will find a lot of bad things about cortisol. But cortisol level, cortisol is still required. Okay, to a certain amount, it will balance your body. Okay, but excess will be bad. Okay, when it comes to protein, uh, normally when you talk about uh, animal feed, when you want to feed a chicken, a fish, the main thing you want to feed to them is uh, protein. So these are body building food. So protein is a uh, study a lot because when you feed all these animals, the main thing is you want them to grow fast with the least amount of uh, feed. So you must get the, all this protein in the right balance. And protein is made up of 20 amino acids. Okay. But for the human, human, only nine are essential. The other one is only for young. Or if you are can, cancer patient, then you may not have the ability to produce this amino acid. So you need food that has this amino acid. If you lack of any of these amino acid, or not enough proportion. Uh, right now, I do not know what's the exact proportion that you require. For example, if you give, let's say, lysine, you require uh, two times more lysine than leucine. But if you don't have enough lysine, then this is useless. Leucine is useless. So you, you must have the amino acid in the correct proportion. Okay, all this amino acid will form a protein. Okay, how how many of these uh, acid molecules of each of these type is required to form a protein? In different parts of the body requires different uh, combination of these amino acid. So it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult to know what is required. But for growth, then you must uh, look after this uh, amino acid. So I will not suggest uh, for small kids uh, to give them a vegetarian diet because you may have a shortage of one of these amino acids. If you give them a meat diet, then it will be fine. It's probably all inside in the correct proportion, more or less uh, correct proportion rather than vegetable because uh, the plant don't need a muscle like us to walk around. The plant just stays still. Okay, so there's definitely certain differences. Okay, so it's just like a pill or bucket, okay, where you, you need, if one of the item is not not enough, huh? then your bucket cannot reach its full potential. Suppose this item, huh, in this illustration, this is just an example, let's say nitrogen or phosphorus. If phosphorus is not enough at the bottom here, then your water level will be at the bottom. It cannot go higher. Okay? But uh, I, don't, I don't quite like this diagram. So I prefer this diagram where mm -hmm. The, the tub is made of wood of different uh, width to indicate a different amount required. For example, uh, you may need very little uh, vitamin in milligram very little, but you need a lot of carbohydrates. So you will, your carbohydrate will be a big piece of wood. Uh, so you need a lot but vitamin will just a very thin piece. Okay, but your, this vitamin, if it's not enough, 
if your vitamin is at the bottom, then the water will be at the bottom. The water cannot rise up to this level. So everything must be in the correct amount. Okay, if you need a minute trace of things like uh, iron, magnesium, zinc, or minute trace, then you will need that. Without that, the, the whole body will not work. Sometimes you, you use some other substitute, but eventually uh, that, that's where the problem will come over long term. The other thing, we do not know what the brain needs. Okay, the brain is also made out of numerous chemicals, acid, those amino acid, uh, cholesterol, fat, water, carbohydrates, minerals, phosphorus, uh, and so on, many, everything, nobody knows. A lot of studies, they try to separate and say, oh, we contain this and that, this and that, but is that all? Is it so simple as that there are many, many other minerals that cannot be fully understood in combination with the rest? Is it? So, but for human, it's okay because you can eat more, you buy more food, you eat more food, then eventually you will get the right nutrient. Although you sometimes you eat the lousy food that don't have the nutrient that is required for you, it will still have a little bit. Every food will have a little bit of everything. So you eat a little bit of that, a lot, lot of that little bit, you end up you have sufficient nutrient. So that's why in the past, uh, the Chinese, they were, or grandmother, they would like the kids to be a bit plump, uh, don't too skinny. Because when the kid is a bit plump, means they overeat. If they overeat, the chances is they get the complete diet. All the nutrients are in. If they are skinny, skinny, then you, you may miss out something. It's definitely not enough fat or not enough carbohydrate. Or maybe on top of that, it, it could be missing on certain nutrients or not enough. So that's why you go a bit fatter is okay. Overfeed a bit to in the older days is okay because they don't have ways to measure. But right now, uh, we we will feed them, but we don't need to overfeed them a lot. Okay, but uh, you must feed them a, a varied diet, all kinds of diets. Okay, don't just fix on one because uh, you, you don't know. The other thing is uh, the brain requires nutrients from the brain that is more or less quite complete nutrient or if it's a uh, blood then the nutrient from the blood so in chinese it's it's quite true uh, in a way otherwise you have to eat a lot let's say you short of iron uh, and then you want to you eat certain food let's say a uh, white meat white meat has lower iron than red meat then you eat a lot of white meat also can but you must eat more maybe two times more, three times more white meat than uh, red meat to get the same amount of iron. But if you eat the blood, then you will get enough iron. You know, but nowadays, uh, they don't sell blood because they worry your disease, uh, not hygienic, uh, all sorts of funny things. Last time we eat blood, fixed blood. And I was young in body when we Always, I always order the fish blood. They cut in tiny, in small little cube, like a 2 cm cube. Then I'll just order. Every time I order all those things, even pig's brain was like it. Nowadays, you don't find all this food. Okay, so now you ask, is the intelligence from the mother or the father? So you find that if the mother is considered XX, and then the father is XY, you may have a girl called XX, okay, one from each side. 
and if this girl marry another guy X Y blue color one, then you may get a girl with a green X and a blue X, or get a boy with a green X or a red or a blue Y. So you find that green and blue, green and blue is from the father. So this girl who has the genes from the father. This boy was the genes from the father, maybe from this father and the grandfather. Okay, so although this uh, this is the mother, but she got the genes from the father. So this girl got the genes from the grandfather and her father. All actually, she can be the red la, red X. That means from the mother side. So this is just to show that the, the sex genes uh, doesn't contain intelligence or in my opinion is only part of the intelligence. Intelligence is everywhere. There are 23 pairs of chromosomes. So every of the chromosome contains certain intelligence for certain or certain behavior, certain technique. So for the for the X and Y, we realize that um, only the male will have the Y. So certain intelligence uh, inside the Y is probably got to do with the maths, science, and programming. Whereas the girl, the intelligence in the X uh, is probably has to do with language and all these things. In my theory, is because uh, the olden early men, uh, the male being stronger, so they will go out and hunt for animals. So that's why the Y end up bigger size, whereas the X end up with a smaller size. So girls are generally smaller than the boy. And Y, because they go out and then they need to do some calculation how far they walk, whether they can come back in time or not, before the nightfall, or how many days, how much food they can carry, how far they walk, uh, how, how many people they went out with, they must come back with the same number. You go out with five people, you must not count up five people. And when you come back, you must count, count five people and you come back. You don't go out five and come back only three. So, the Y must count, and they must count distance, they must count timing, they must measure this, estimate distance from the animal, how fast he can run, how how well, all sort of things are. So the Y needs a lot of brain power to compute. Whereas the girl, uh, X, uh, where they stay at home, they maybe pluck some fruits, and then do some housework, or look after children, then the girl need to talk a lot, communicate with the children, communicate with neighbors, communicate with friends. So girls tend to be better in language. So that's why the X and Y also contain certain intelligence. X may be intelligence in languages. So X has like 800 genes. The Y only have 200 genes. So Y has less genes than the X. But doesn't matter, the guy has one X. So X plus Y is 800 plus 200, she has a thousand genes. Whereas the girl has 800, 800, 1000, 600 more genes. Okay, no? so that's why the girls always do better in uh, languages. Whereas the boy uh, are better in maths and computing, programming. It's, it's very true. You go to the maths competition and programming competition, they are almost all guys. Okay. And not true that the intelligence comes from mother okay, or, or father. It can come from anywhere and it's spread over all the 23 chromosomes. Not just X and Y. That's a, these are not the only genes. That, they are, X and Y is only one, one pair of chromosomes. There are 23 pairs. Okay, so what's the role of the father? Like, as a father, actually, it's only to provide 
the quality sperm. That's all. Why why you what a father gonna do? Nothing. The role of father is just provide the of course the other one they say, oh provide uh, income, uh, go out and work, earn money, feed the family. All this obvious uh, But we're talking about genetically, uh, the father has no role, only one little sperm. Just the wife provide the egg. Okay, and then the wife become the copy machine. For nine months, uh, you got to clone clone the the when the sperm fertilize the egg, it has to the egg must multiply the the, the DNA inside and the, the cell must keep multiplying. That is like a photocopy. The wife has to produce and millions and millions of cells and the baby will grow from one tiny egg into one baby like three kg so the wife role is very important it's a photocopy machine but what if the wife is not uh, nutritionally well fed then there may be a problem with the photocopy if you don't fit your photocopier with good quality toner or electricity or there's a problem with toner or the, the photocopy uh, electronics uh, then the the baby will not will have problem uh, when it come out you have some problem okay but generally i will think that if there is a problem the baby is a parasite they will suck every nutrient out from the mother so if the mother is not uh, didn't take, for example, didn't take enough calcium to provide to the baby, the baby will just suck it out from the bone. The mother lost bone mass. If the baby don't have enough water, it will suck from the mother. Because it's a parasite inside the body. Okay, so the photocopy machine generally has a, a well well maintain uh, QR uh, quality control so most likely it should be fine unless the wife is very badly uh, undernourished okay then after the baby is born okay then the it's a baby's turn uh. the baby must have a complete uh, diet proper nutrients Okay, nutrient is not just a uh, protein and protein. It's like it has vitamin, minerals like zinc, iron, phosphorus. Okay, and uh, many, many uh, a lot of kind of nutrient. In in science, uh, they will classify it. They will classify it, and they will tell you they will name it all the minerals. They will name one by one and tell you you need how many milligram of vitamin C, how many milligrams of vitamin A and so on. Who cares? When you eat apple, orange, rice, chicken, do you know how many milligrams of vitamin C have you eaten? How many milligrams of vitamin A? How many grams of protein? You don't care. Uh, you just eat until your stomach full. Enough. Uh. As long as you are not hungry, okay. You eat and eat and eat. You, you don't care. So as a baby, you don't care, you just keep on feeding, but just make sure you feed enough nutrients. Don't just keep feeding one single type of food. Of course, milk is okay. Milk is more or less quite complete. But uh, once the baby starts to grow up and have a uh, hard food, uh, like rice and all this meat, then you have to mix uh, with rice, meat, vegetable, whatever you can find, you just provide. Hopefully, uh, it will be complete nutrient. If you short of one nutrient, then then the baby will not grow properly. Okay. Then, uh, then make sure the baby is not stressed. When it's not stressed, then it will continue to grow and grow and develop and not uh, stop for one day, stop for one hour, stop for every day stop for two hours because of stress then you you find that your baby will be having some problem already 
Okay, but how to remove stress? Earlier, we already say already. The nipple, make sure the nipple, you cut a hole across or Y shape. Then the baby will have a, can drink faster and then go and sleep again. And then uh, make sure you bring the baby up, urine, then put it back. So what my wife sleep at nine or 10. Then the last feed, of course she'll feed, uh, she feed at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, then she go to sleep. Then I will feed at 1 a.m. I sleep very late. So 1 a.m., 12, 12 midnight or whatever. So I'll feed, but I'll feed more. <laughs> the I say okay, you can feed a bit more. So I feed a bit more. Then the baby will, will be full, and then you sleep until maybe four o'clock, five o'clock. Then they will, then my wife will wake up ready, wake up ready, and then bring the baby up, urine, and feed again, and then sleep again. So the the baby don't have chance to wet the bed or even wet the pampers. So the baby is stress-free. You just wake up, urine, drink, sleep again. Then every day like that, until the baby is big enough, open eyes can, can start to do work. Otherwise, every day just do this. There's no need. Like some grandmother say, let the baby cry. My baby must cry. So you build up the lungs, uh, build up all, I don't think so. Lah. My hardly cry, and yet they all develop normal. What lungs? Of course, my children can't run uh, like an Olympic champion like that because the father can't run, the, the mother also cannot run. So we are not athletic. So my children are not athletic as well because we lack of this talent in that area. Okay, so thank you.